Welcome friends to a new session on the course School Organization, Administration and Management. Here we will have a discussion on School Management Committee or SMC. In this session we will discuss the meaning, role and functions of School Management Committee. We will also see the structure and duties of SMC. School Management Committees or SMCs build a critical bridge between the community and the schools playing the additional role of providing oversight in school to ensure all basic requirements of the school are being met as per the right to educational guidelines in 2009. Parental involvement in children's education is largely believed to lead to improved learning outcomes. The level of involvement can vary from providing a secure home for children, maintaining a healthy parent-teacher communication and parents volunteering to involve in the governance of the school. The abbreviation SMC stands for School Management Committee. The RTE Act 2009 has come into force with effect from 1st April 2010 in our country which is a landmark in the history of education. Efficient provisions regarding constitution and functions of SMCs have been given in section 21 and 22 of the Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009. SMC is formed to plan, monitor and implement schemes as per the right of children to free and compulsory education RTE Act of 2009. SMC shall be constituted in every government and aided school and reconstituted every two years according to the RTE Act of 2009. SMC shall play an important role for effective development of a school. Role and functions of the SMC as envisaged under the RTE Act 2009. The RTE Act 2009 has come into force with effect from 1st April 2010 in our country which is a landmark in the history of education. The said act assigns immense importance to school management committees as a part of decentralized structure to ensure the effective and regular functioning of the schools and education center and one in which the parents will have a preponderance. Essential provisions regarding constitution and functions of SMCs have been given in section 21 and 22 of the Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009. Section 21 a school other than a school specified in subclass 4 of class N of section 2 shall constitute a school management committee consisting of the elected representatives of local authority, parents or guardians of children admitted in such schools and teachers provided that at least three fourth of members of such committee shall be parents or guardians provided further that proportionate representation shall be given to parents or guardians of children belonging to disadvantaged group and weaker sections, provided that 50 percent of members of such committee shall be women. Second, the school management committee shall perform certain functions namely, first one monitoring the working of the school preparing and recommend school development plan, monitoring the utilization of the grants received from the appropriate government or local authority or any source and performing such other functions as may be prescribed. Section 22 1. Every school management committee constituted under subsection 1 of section 21 shall prepare a school development plan in such a manner as may be prescribed. 2. 
the school development plan so prepared under subsection 1 shall be on the basis for the plans and grants to be made by the appropriate government or local authority as the case may be. It is obvious that majority of SMC members are the parents or guardians of those children who are studying in the school. Chairperson of the SMC shall also be a parent or guardian. Bank account of SMC is maintained by joint signature of chairperson and member secretary who is the headmaster. Representation of the socially backward parents and elected representatives of Gram Panchayat in SMC shall play important role for the effective development of a school. SMC has many functions as enrollment, retention, completing of elementary education with quality for all children residing in catchment area of school and preparation of school development plan. As per responsibility given in the RTE Act, it is mandatory and important to be aware that SMC members regarding the roles and functions through orientations and trainings. Unless the members of the SMC that is chairperson, member secretary, local representative and other members are aware of the main provisions of RTE objectives, composition and their role and functions, they cannot contribute for effective development of a school and to achieve objectives of RTE provisions regarding SMC. When community and local bodies are empowered to function for the development of elementary education, much improvement could be seen in academic and non-academic areas. They are the ones who can assess the problems faced by schools. So, several stu studies have been conducted on community involvement in the management of elementary schools. We shall see the functions of school management committee. Monitor the working of the school. Monitor the enrollment and attendance of all children from the neighborhood. Prepare and recommend school development plan. Monitor the identification and enrollment of disabled children and ensure that they are provided with facilities and materials till completion of elementary education. Monitor the implementation of midday meal and other government school schemes. Monitor the maintenance of norms and standards prescribed in the schedule which would include classrooms, school facilities, teacher pupil ratios etc. Monitor the attendance and punctuality of teachers and ensure 100 percent enrollment of children in the age group of 6 to 14 years. We can now discuss the structure of SMC. One, parents from all sections of the society. RTE Act suggests that 75 percent of the SMC must be composed or of parents or guardians. Two, elected members of the local authority. It should include some elected members of the local committee. Three, teachers from the school. Teachers should be nominated by the headmaster since they act as liaison between parents and students. 4. Local educationalists. SMC should have provisions to utilize expertise of local educationists for effective functioning of school. 5. Students from the school. SMC should have proper representation of students. 6. 50 percent of the members shall be women. 7. As per the Act of Central Educational Rights, School Management Committee should be formed and reorganized once in two years in all government schools except unaided institutions. Number of members in the committee 1. In a school with students below 750, the total members can be 16 apart from the convener and joint convener. 2. In a school with more than 750 students, the total members can be 20 apart from convener and joint convener. 
3. 75 per cent of the members in the committee should be parents of the students or guardian in the absence of parents. Also, it should include members of the mother parent teacher association, parents of selected students, parents or guardians of students belonging to the weaker sections of the society, students eligible for special consideration. Enough representation be given to parents representing backward sections and depressed categories. 4. The rest of the 25 percent of the members should be from the sections a ward or division member of local self government from the location of the school b a teacher selected from the school by them c an educational expert from the place selected by the parents and d school leader 5 for the execution of administrative affairs a chairman or vice chairman should be elected from the parent representatives headmaster or teacher in charge would be the ex officio member convener of the committee in schools with higher secondary section principal would be the ex officio member convener and hm the joint convener 6 Convener has a right to invite three experts at a time for seeking expert opinion regarding protection of children, health, nutrition, psychology and administrative activities being undertaken by the committee. 7. The committee should meet two months once at least. The minutes of the meet be recorded properly and decisions be taken based on the opinion of the majority. Also, it should be displayed on the school notice board in such a way that even the public can notice it. 8. Assistant Educational Officer should confirm the formation of the committee, trainings imparted to the members and evaluate the activities as well. Duties of the committee A. Monitor the activities of the institution B. Preparation of school development plan and recommend for its implementation. C. Oversee the distribution of financial aid available from the state government, local self-government departments or other agencies. D. Apart from these, certain duties have to be done by the committee like First one simple creative discussions on rights of children under right to education act duties of the state government local self government departments parents etc should be conducted with the people in the area where school is situated two the punctuality maintained by the teachers in being present in school meetings between parents or guardians and teachers to make them aware of the attendance, curricular and co-curricular abilities of the students, improvement in studies and other such details of the students should be confirmed. 3. Also ensure teachers are not assigned other duties except census, disaster relief activities, local self-government or state government or parliament election. Four. Teachers are not handling private tuition or education activities should be ensured. 5. Monitor whether the expected improvement in learning as set by the Center for Academic Activities is achieved. The absence of teachers and students be noted. Action be taken to fill leave vacancies for a period of less than a year from the impanel list of teachers prepared by local self-government departments on daily wage basis. 6. School admission and continuous attendance of the children of that area should be ensured to avoid the complete dropout of children. Students who are absent for 15 days continuously should be included in the dropout register and steps be taken to rectify the factors leading to the dropout of the child and bring him or her back to school. 7. Monitoring be done in the above set matters and laws and standards specified in Kerala Education Act and rules for the conduct of activities in all sections of the school. 
8. Any deviation in rights of children, especially mental or physical harassment, denying admission, any aids available free of cost, being not given on time, etc., be taken to the notice of the local self government departments. 9. Need based action plan be prepared. 10. Arrange additional coaching classes for children who need special care and compensatory classes for children who get late admission or who lag behind in studies. Also, make it sure whether class PTA and mother PTA etc. are conducted. 11. Physically disabled children's admission, the facilities needed for them, their role in primary education and whether they complete their course of study should be supervised. 12. Monitor the noon meal program. 13. Coordinate the particulars and the cooperation from the authorized centers, the public and other agencies for the best means and resources to be provided to enable the curricular and co-curricular activities. 14. Prepare an annual account statement of income and expenditure of the fund of the committee for school. 15. To execute the duties assigned as per this act, any amount received by the committee should be with the joint account of the committee chairman and convener and it should be audited every year by a chartered accountant fixed by the committee. In the annual meet, the audit report along with the account should be produced. It should be countersigned by the committee chairman or the head chairman and the convener to be produced before the assistant educational officer within a month. 16. Within two months after meeting such expenses or in two months in the financial year which comes first, utilization certificate of funds received by the school management committee must be sum submitted to the allotted center of fund authority. Preparation of school development plan 1. In two months after the formation of school management committee, a school development plan should be prepared. 2. It should be a three-year plan comprising three separate annual sub-plans. 3. It should have certain details like estimate of class-wise admission for each year, basic amenities including building, laboratory, library, toilets, drinking water, wooden furniture, instruments, playground etc. The preparation of master plan should include the future needs of the school, student friendly, eco friendly construction concepts etc. An expert's opinion of service or service can be availed of. Expenses for special coaching facilities for the late admission students, separate evaluation of needs of each section on age basis, free textbooks, uniform, travel concessions, free accommodation etc. and any more needs to be satisfied under this act including related financial needs. As per the calculations done according to the law stated in this list, the total number of teachers needed for classes 1 to 5 and 6 to 8, each subject teachers, part time teachers, headmaster etc. School development plan should be countersigned by the school management committee chairperson or vice chairperson and convener. Within one month after the approval of the committee, it should be submitted to the assistant educational officer and centre for local authorities. We shall now see the challenges of SMC. Quality of education and overall development of schools is one of the main challenges before the school management committees. Capacity building of the SMC members is also one of the main challenges. Non-participation of SMC members in making school development plan and execution thereof is not as expected in the RTE Act 2009. Functional linkages of committees with local bodies are very weak. 
improvement of teaching learning processes in the schools on the part of the SMCs is also weak. Legal provisioning for community participation is weak. Enrollment trend in government upper primary schools shows continuous drop which is one of the major challenges before the SMCs. Suggestion for further improvement or strengthening of SMCs. Enable the school system to encourage the participation level of SMC members in their functioning and also strengthening the participation of community members in the smooth functioning of the schools. The duration of SMC in short and in this short duration of time no system can aware any SMC member completely aware of their ro roles and responsibilities as an effective executive member of the school management committee. Although there is a process of election for framing or constituting the SMCs, but in some schools this process does not happen in case of members for the executive committee. Here the election is only held for the office of president only. So election process should be adopted for electing every member. Roles and responsibilities should be made clear to all the SMC members. Some incentives should be given to the committee members for encouraging the effective participation. First in the trainings of SMCs and then in the management of elementary education. There should be effective convergence and collaboration with other SMCs at block and district level. There should be visits for the SMCs to other schools where the SMCs are doing exceptionally good so that they can learn from the experiences. Management of the midday meal or MDM scheme should be given completely to the school management committees so that this scheme may be effectively implemented by reducing the burden of the teachers. The construction work of school buildings, toilets, boundary walls and playgrounds etc. should also be given to SMCs in order to spare the teachers completely for the teaching and learning activities. More grants and funds should be sanctioned as there are various activities at the school level. For more involvement of the community in general and school management committee in particular, frequent supervision and inspection of schools should be done. Teachers should be given training in order to encourage the community participation in the school affairs. More people should be involved in proper functioning of the school through media campaigns, poster campaigns and discussions through electronic and print media. School management committees should focus on tracking every child's progress and continuously monitor the school development. SMC members should be given a wedge between attending meetings and the quality of outcomes in the school. Attention should be given to both infrastructural facilities as well as towards the staff availability. The SMC members should be provided some financial incentives or rewards. These rewards and incentives can be helpful in providing positive motivation to SMC members and can boost the morale of these members and develop a feeling of belongingness among them. The headmaster of the school who is also member secretary of the SMC is already overburdened with the curricular and co-curricular activities of the school. Since as per guidelines periodic trainings are an important component of capacity building of SMC members, hence such trainings are very important for increasing the awareness of the members on procedures followed for formations nominations and functions of SMC. Let us now summarize what we have just discussed. The school management committee is constituted in each state of the country as per the RTE Act 2009 to ensure involvement of communities in school governance to enhance school quality with equity. SMC shall play important role for effective development of a school. Thus, 
SMC is a committee constituted in every government and aided school to involve the community in monitoring the working of a school. SMC has a very crucial role in actualizing the goals of RTE. SMC shall prepare a school development plan to monitor the development of school. The major functions include 10% enrollment of out of school children, retention till completion of elementary education, monitoring of school activities and preparation of school development plan. SMC includes parents from all sections of the society, elected members of the local authority, teachers from school, local educationists and students from the school. 50% of the members shall be women. Thank you for watching the session on school management committee. See you again with a new topic. Till then, bye.